blessings and welcome to your program. Shalom, shalom. Amen. I am one of your hosts, Dr. Marisol Pelzer, and my the other host is Brother Dexter Pelzer. Amen. Be Amen. blessed. Amen. Amen. What a blessing to be with you today. And today's topic, it's interesting. It is one of the most effective prayers in the Bible. It, it, it's a prayer that is in two verses, Dexter. Amen? Mm-hmm. And it's the prayer of Joash. In Jabez. First, Jabez. Uh-huh. And it's in First Chronicles 4.10. Okay? And sometimes, don't you find yourself wondering, can I do more for God? Can I be more effective in, in my personal life, in my ministry, in loving my family for the Lord. Amen? Mm-hmm. And, and, and you're not alone because God has created us to do wonderful things. Even the Lord Jesus said, you will do greater things that I will do. Right, Dexter? That's right. Because he says when you preach the gospel, I will have miracle signs and wonders to confirm the gospel. Amen? So he has created us for great things because when we do great things, those things that we do bring glory to the Father. Amen. And they speak of his, and of his awesomeness and who he is. And you know, God is a fulfiller of dreams. Jeremiah 29, 11, it's one of our key verses in our lives. For I know the plans I have for you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Amen? So if he has plans for us, there's dreams that he's put in our hearts to fulfill. Amen, Dexter? But before we start teaching you about the prayer of Jabez, I'm going to ask Brother Dexter to please pray to introduce the program. Amen? Amen. So, Father, we just come to you today. We just love you, Abba Father. We're so thankful to be here before you. We ask you to just take over at the altar here, and we invite you, Holy Spirit, to take over not only here but in every home. And we ask you to open up our eyes to see, our ears to hear, and our hearts to receive your truth and only your, your truth. And we make a covenant under Psalm 141.3 that with our tongue and our mouth that you will guard it and only speak the words of spirit and life. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. <clears throat> and you know... The Bible has a record of Java's prayer, which is in four sentences. In verse 9, um, he asked the Lord to extend his territory, and the Lord answered him. So I want to read First Chronicles 4, 10. Okay. Start with verse 9? Yeah, with verse 9. We'll start. It says, Javes was more honorable than his brother's. His mother has named him Jabez, saying, I gave birth to him in pain. And then here's the prayer in verse 10. Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. And God granted his request. Wow, Dexter. That is amazing. The four things he asked of the Lord, he asked the Lord to bless him, to enlarge his territory, for the hand of the Lord to be upon him, and to keep him from harm, that he will be free from pain. Amen. And um, it is amazing. And it was such an effective prayer because the Lord answered immediately. So my question to you, Dexter, what was so special about Javez that God answered his prayer so quickly? I want to be like him. Well, it's really interesting because there's a twin answer to that, Marisol. Mm -hmm. There's a curse upon him with his name, and there's the fact that he's honorable. So he deals with both in this prayer really important that we see that and how God deals with it. So first of all, Jabez, his name means um, uh, someone who causes pain. And his, his mother named him that because he caused such pain in the childbirth. 
And, and because of that, he will cause pain, the actual root of that name, that he will cause pain. He was actually cursed because, remember, names had meaning mm -hmm. for the Jewish people. So the name that you were given is what you will bring forth into the earth. That's why the names, that's why God changed Abraham's name, Abraham to Abraham, and changed Jacob's name to Israel. From the trickster, remember, which he did, he tricked his brother Esau to get his birthright, to Israel, being the father of the nation of God. So names were so critical. So Jabez was born with a name that was a curse that he would bring pain upon the earth. And so he was dealing with that by instead of speaking those words of death and accepting that curse over his life, he was translating them into words of life and asking the Lord to bless him instead of have, have him be a curse. Because actually the literal translation of the last part of their prayer is to keep me from evil that I may not cause pain. He didn't want to live his birthright. So why did God answer that prayer is the honorable part, Marisol. So... He did not let his painful past hold him back for what God had for him. Or the word spoken into his Over. life prohibit what he could become mm -hmm. in God, which is so important, Marisol. So now you ask the question, why was his prayer heard that God answered it? Because we know at the end, so God granted him what he requested. Now you're talking about that he was honor, more honorable than his brothers. But he cried out to the God of Israel. Yes. So by crying out to God is an action of dependence on the Lord. Trust and faith. And when you depend on God for, and you trust him and you walk in faith, you will be blessed. That's right. You don't turn to anyone else, Marisol. That's the point. Anything going on in our life, including having a curse or family curses coming down, doesn't matter if it's the curse of diabetes that runs through your family or heart disease or whatever it is. You have a way of breaking that by going to God. Because the word says Jesus Christ became a curse on the cross for us so that he took the burden of all curses on the cross for us so that no curse would hold on us. So now we have that beautiful gift of Jesus Christ on the cross that when now we can go to the Lord in prayer. And I think it's really important, beginning part of this that we remember, is that whatever is spoken into us, even by our parents, some, some of us have... Some people may have had parents that were pretty mean or spoke words of death into their children, including you. The point being, this can all be overcome by running to Jesus, running to the Lord, and doing it in prayer. So that is so important that we know that, that our beginnings do not determine our end. And God in his grace will turn all that around when we take that to the cross, and all those curses can be broken in the name of Jesus. And, and there's another thing that, that, that draws my attention. It says that he was more honorable than his brothers, <clears throat> yep. which tells me he was a man <clears throat> of character, a man who yeah. walked in holiness. Right. And, and God will bless those who walk in holiness. That's right. Who walk in obedience to his, to his word. Now... Let's talk about that, because it's not popular today to talk about sin, repentance, holiness. I understand that. But I'm going to tell you something. It is the Word of God. So we're going to talk about that aspect of it, why his prayer was heard, in a way that perhaps not only everyone wants to talk about, but let's go to what the Word of God says about why God heard Jabez's prayer. Turn to John 9.31. We only have a few scriptures on this. It says that, now we know that God does not hear sinners. But if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, he hears them. So the fact that Jabez was an honorable man and he was worshiping or turning to God with this prayer meant that God heard him. So not only did he, he cancel the curse, reverse it in his life, but he blessed him with the additional land and everything he asked for. And his hand was with him all the days of his life. How do we know that? Because the word of God says so. So now if you turn to Psalm 66, 8, let's make sure we understand this. There is such a contrast in the Word of God between someone is walking with the Lord in obedience and their prayers being heard and someone that is not. And so I think it's always important that we remember that. Psalm 66, 18. If I regard iniquity in my heart, in other words, I love my iniquity, 
We know Jesus talks about this a lot. He talks about why the wicked don't come to him because they love their iniquity more than they love God and his righteousness and his holiness. They love it so much that they turn away from God back to their iniquity and they continue to practice their iniquity. So if I regard iniquity, in other words, I'm I'm practicing iniquity in my life. If I regard it in my heart, the Lord will not hear. Wow. And then the psalmist says, but certainly God has heard me. (laughs) He has attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God who has not turned away from my prayer nor his mercy from me. So he's, again, the psalmist is making a contrast. This psalmist, you can see it's clear from here, walks with the Lord. However, he's contracting someone that regards iniquity in his heart. So let's turn to one more, Proverbs 28, 9. Make sure this sinks in. Psalm 66, 8. Okay. And in Proverbs 28, 9. Huh. One, one being any of us who turns his ear away from hearing the word of the Lord, the law, the, the Bible, even his prayer is an abomination. To who? To God. Wow. So if I don't believe this is the way, the truth, and the life, and I don't believe the word of God is the truth, and I turn away from it, and I go do my sins and regard iniquity in my heart and all that, even our prayers are an abomination to God. Wow. In fact, the only prayer we see he really listens to then is a prayer of confession and repentance to turn back to him. That's what the Word of God says. So let's turn to 1 Peter 3.12 and do so, the contrast. So let, me, yeah. let me stop you. So what yeah. you're saying is that the blessing of the Lord and the protection of the Lord do not come out of Malachi but they are a result of our devotion, our obedience to God and to his purposes. Right. Yeah. In other words, this is New Testament we were just reading. This isn't just Old Testament. This is John 9.31, my dear. And where Jesus himself is speaking that. This is not Old Testament. This is the word of the Lord coming out of the very mouth of Jesus. So we need to understand that if we want our prayers to be heard, we need to be walking with the Lord in holiness and in obedience to him. I'm going to ask you a question. Yeah. So this is applicable to everyone in the body, right? Um, yeah. When you, whether you are a pastor, a prophet, an evangelist, a deacon, an elder in the church, as soon as you walk out of God obedience and you regard iniquity in your heart. You're in, you're, the de- you're in a danger zone, aren't you? Well, yeah, and the greatest danger besides maybe even your own salvation is simply the fact that you have opened the door and the devil now has legal authority to kill, destroy, or bring death to you. Because that's what the, the Word of God says the devil's job is. And he doesn't have any legal authority over the children of God unless we open a door with sin or iniquity. The word is very clear about that. Then he can get a foothold, a stronghold, and start to dominate and destroy our life. So both are horrible things to have happen in our life. So when God's word says what it says, it doesn't just say it as fluff. It says it because it matters. Wow. And it matters to God. And so again, New Testament, 1 Peter 3.12, Marisol, for the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. Okay, so there it is. His, 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 his eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. Why? And his ear, because his ears are open to their prayers. Wow. Next verse. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Which means he doesn't hear their prayers. So practicing iniquity in your life must be dealt with. The reason why God, Jabez's prayer was heard, the curse was removed over his life, and he was radically blessed all the days of his life is because he was an honorable man walking in righteousness before the Lord. That is clear. One more scripture, just so you understand the contrast. And again, many of these scriptures give you the contrast, contrast but last one is Proverbs 15:29. In other words, I don't think if I am practicing sin in my life, it's wise for me to run around saying, oh, oh, bless me, oh, bless me, oh, prophesy something really neat over my life, oh, bless me, and run around like that, always wanting to be blessed and prospered, 
why we are regarding sin and iniquity in our lives. I don't think that's very wise. I think the Word of God is very clear. When you're regarding sin and iniquity in your life, you run to the Lord immediately and deal with it. Keep a short account with your sins before the Lord. So now Proverbs 15, 29, last verse on this. And then we want to switch to something really cool about really what the Lord has been saying to us about this. 15, 29. The Lord is far from the wicked, but he hears the prayer of the righteous. The word of God always confirms itself, and it is consistent Old Testament to New Testament. And I get tired of people saying, oh, but that's Old Testament. No. Even if you read the word of God, it says to take treasures from the old and the new and to teach people with them. It's very clear. Jesus himself described that as a scribe today. Someone who takes treasures from the Old Testament and New Testament and teaches people. That's what we're to be in, according to the word of God. So, Marisol. Jabez was blessed for two reasons. He was honorable. He was honorable, and despite the curse that was over him, he actually could remove that. What a blessing for Jabez. Remove that, eradicate it off his life. And it was not a selfish prayer. From that perspective, it was simply that I will not bring pain to others in my life. I'm not going to continue the string of horror that came down my family line, that my very mother gave me as a name. And again, I love that aspect of God in his mercy and grace when we run to him, not to anyone else. And he said, let your hand be with me. After he asked for the Lord to en enlarge his territory. And, and to enlarge your territory means to enlarge your sphere of influence. Yes. Right? Yeah. And to occupy, like sister, our, one of our spiritual mothers last night was saying, to occupy, take dominion and multiply for the kingdom purposes. But if you're not walking in that obedience, in that holiness, and, 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 and according to the purposes of God, he not, he, you will not occupy, you will not take dominion, and you will not multiply. And let me make this really simple, because people are like, oh, you can't pray that prayer. That's selfish, blah, blah. No. God wants the kingdom of his children to invade this earth, the light to overcome the darkness. Read, read Isaiah 60, 1 through 3, and 61 through 1 through 3. We are to invade every sphere of influence we are in and bring the kingdom of God into that influence, because the light will always overcome the darkness. The Lord promises that. So, if you read about Jesus prophetically in Isaiah 9, 7, nothing says it's better about why asking to expand your tent pegs and the territory or the land you own on behalf of serving the king of kings is a godly prayer. Let's listen to this. Prophesying over Jesus, of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even forever. Of the increase of his government and peace. So God wants the kingdom of God to invade this earth. So if we pray for our sphere of influence to increase, our tent pegs to increase, for us to be blessed in our businesses, blessed with land, blessed with all those things, but we're doing it unto the Lord to serve him, dedicating it all back to him, these are prayers that are awesome. And let me tell you why, Marisol. Go to Ephesians 3.20. What we want to release in a moment is a prayer to expand our tent pegs in a way that is pleasing to the world. Ephesians 3.20. This is what the Lord has been saying to us. We have to dream much bigger dreams for how we serve the Lord and everything in our life in serving the Lord, including our sphere of influence increasing everything. And it says, now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. To him who is able to do abundantly more than we can ask in prayer or think. That's... <laughs> And it goes back to Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you. And to give you hope and a future. Right. And, and God's dreams for you are 
bigger than your dreams for yourself. Yeah, and, and in Mark 10, 27, simple verse, with men it is impossible, but not with God. For with God, all things, including these wild dreams we ask him to give us, are possible. With God, all things are possible. And, and one more, Marisol, I want to oh, go to man. Matthew 17, 20, just so we don't miss this. Jesus says, <clears throat> if you have faith as a mustard seed, you know, mm -hmm. a mustard tree, the mustard seed is tiny, you can barely see it. If you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move and nothing will be impossible for you. And the Lord says, if you ask anything in my, if my words abide in you and you abide in me and you ask anything in my name, my father will give it to you. Wow. Yes. Sounds like we need to expand our dreams to line up with God's plans and dreams for us, Marisol. Yes. So can we pray? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Father, so, we just thank you, Lord. Father, we, we choose, Lord, this day to we women and men of God who walk as Javes walk honorably before you in obedience yes, before Lord. you Amen. depending completely on you Lord Amen. walking according to your word in holiness and in complete obedience Lord Father we ask you in the name of Jesus that we're able to walk in such a way that we know that we know that all things are possible with you and that we dream big for your kingdom purposes, Father. And Father, I just declare in the name of Jesus, Lord, that we occupy, that we take dominion and yes, then Lord. we multiply for the kingdom purposes. Lord, that you extend our tent according to your will, Lord, Amen. and our fears of influence so that we might magnify and glorify the name of Jesus. We declare that we depend on you, Lord, that we, we depend on you, and that we choose to walk in the plans that we, you have for us. And Father, drive those plans in our hearts. Amen. There it is. Yeah. Write those plans in our hearts. Big dreams. Your dreams. Big dreams, Father. Onto our Father. hearts, Lord. Yes. Hearts of clay. We choose Write to be obedient. Us. We yes, choose Lord. to be obedient. And Lord. expand our vision to be one with your vision. Yes. Take our eyes off of what is possible on this yes. earth. And we ask you, we put our eyes on you, Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith. Expand our faith and our vision to see what you see in our lives. We surrender to that radically for you to release dreams, visions, revelations to us, Father. And we choose to follow you in this, in the power of the resurrection. We simply ask that you make this clear to us in the name of Jesus, and we will follow in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. What a blessing. I felt the spirit moving there. I've... This is important to the Lord because he wants to release a lot on this earth right now. But he needs people that are willing to follow him in the power of the resurrection and radically give our lives to him for that. And then to be honorable in serving him so we carry the integrity and honor of the Lord's name. The word says we carry the honor of his name with us, that we keep that in our holiness. And therefore, our prayers, wow, they just go right up to him and are answered. They may not be answered immediately, but they'll be answered in perfect time. And we'll have confidence, Marisol, that all of our prayers are answered by the Lord God Almighty. And that is something that I think we all want in our lives. Amen. Amen. What a blessing. So this has been your program. Shalom, shalom. I'm going to encourage you to go to our YouTube channel and look us under shalomshalom.org and see the program again and take notes and declare it over yourself. Amen. And we love you and Amen. we'll see you next week. Shalom, shalom. Amen. Amen.